Anya, what is important for you in a new city that you're discovering? Of course, I like to do things. I like to walk around, to explore new places, learn something new. This would be great. Sketch you. Activities. Okay. What else? We have to eat. Nightlife. Yeah. Very important. Accommodation. Accommodation is the last step. Today, we're off to explore one of Nice's coolest up and coming neighborhoods. A beautiful and unique area that's distinctly different from the old town and the famous Promenade des Anglais. So, welcome to the vibrant Quartier du Port or Harborside neighborhood. We'll check out exactly what this neighborhood has to offer in terms of fun activities, delicious food, buzzing nightlife, and great accommodation. You'll find this lively, charming neighborhood all around the port of Nice, Port Olympia, nestled right behind the castle hill that separates this area from the old town. Make sure not to miss Place Garibaldi to the north of the port, along with Rue Cassini and Rue François Guissol and Rue Las Caris and some other streets you'll see in just a moment. The residential streets with colorful houses along the quays and stretching further inland are highly cherished by locals. The entire Quartier du Port exudes a lively yet tranquil vibe, rendering it an ideal place to call home. Thanks to a significant transformation in recent years, the neighborhood now boasts numerous new small and stylish cafes, restaurants and bars with inviting terraces. So allowing yourself to wander through these charming streets is a great beginning. But what exactly is there to discover? You absolutely must climb up the castle hill, Colline du Château, that looms above the port, if you haven't already. There are two entrances from the harbour side, one, Monte Montfort, located at the very beginning of the port, coming from the sea, along a small road with no pavement, and the other, Monte Eberlé, leading from Place Garibaldi. They both converge halfway up. From here, it's a few more steep turns, and you'll be rewarded with a gorgeous view of the port. The castle is really like a little, quiet, peaceful paradise in the middle of the town. You should absolutely do this. Another experience not to miss is a boat trip. This year, between the end of February and the end of October, there are daily cruises, except for Mondays, from Nice Harbour to Villefranche-sur-Mer and back. A little later in the season, the same company also takes you to Cannes, Monaco or Saint-Tropez. If you have a few extra days on your hands, there's always Corsica to be discovered with one of the big yellow and white ferries. And here's an extra tip that not many know about. There's a small wooden boat, Lou Passagine, that takes you for free from one quay of the port to the other, usually between mid-May and mid-September. Another well-kept secret is probably the nicest beach in Nice, tucked behind the port toward the east, Plage de la Réserve. It's closed today due to recent bad weather, but just take a peek at what it looked like last summer. And hey, even right now, there's no harm in bringing your bath towel. Remember, it is March, it is winter, and the beach is completely crowded. If you're up for some physical activity, one of those beautiful coastal paths along the French Riviera begins right behind Reserve Beach. It can take you all the way to Villefranche-sur-Mer if you're feeling adventurous. On your way back, you can also climb up the hill called Mont Bouron, check out the breathtaking view of the port area and descend back to your starting point in Nice. For history enthusiasts, there's plenty of prehistoric evidence to explore here in the south of France, dating back hundreds of thousands of years BC. Next to the port in Nice, there's this museum, tucked underneath an apartment complex, which showcases relics of Homo erectus, who inhabited right this spot around 400,000 years ago. And in a cave, the Grotte du Lazare, situated just across from the sea near the beach we highlighted earlier, archaeologists unearthed the remains of 28 prehistoric humans, dating back somewhere between 190 and 120,000 years ago. You saw that you can walk along the sea, you can get up 
to the castle hill, have a beautiful view. What else? We had, uh, we learned some, you can learn something new when you go to the prehistorical sites like Tara Amata or La Grotte du Lazare. So here we go. I think we can take the activities off. Time to check out the culinary scene of the Harborside neighborhood. There are several cute little cafes in this neighborhood, but we've settled on Canopy for its exceptional coffee to start the day. To accompany our beverage, they offer croissants and other viennoiseries. Today, owner Sébastien has tested out a new brownie recipe, and this is his signature dish, hardly found around here. Oeuf à la coque, boiled eggs served with an exquisite blend of salty sweet herbs, local and organic eggs, of course, which you can also purchase to take home. The place is tiny, but all the more charming for it, with just two sets of tables out front, perfect for a summer breakfast in the shade. And if you liked your coffee, why not take some home with you? You could also grab a coffee to go and pick up a snack at this nearby bakery, Boulangerie Maritime, which came highly recommended by friends. Unfortunately, it's closed this week, so we'll have you try it out and let us know what you think. In case you cook your own meals while in Nice and you're a fan of seafood, this is as fresh and local as it gets. Right on the port, on the quay to the right when facing the sea, you'll find a few fishermen selling their catch of the day. Alongside a variety of fish, you can also buy fresh sea urchins every morning from 10.30 to 12.30. For lunch, most of the restaurants, not only in this area, have special deals. Here around the port, you'll find everything from the Michelin-starred establishment called Jan to more affordable restaurants, serving both local and international cuisine, all the way to typical local cheap eats that we've presented in another video, by the way. However, Anja and I have different plans. We booked a table. I can't wait to have lunch now with Ayla. We are determined to enjoy a meal in the sun at this former seminary where future priests were trained back in the day. With this view, can you blame us? They serve lunch on the gorgeous terrace almost year-round and word has spread, so making a reservation is definitely a must. We're opting for the three-course lunch special for 29 euros beginning with a delicious cold platter of artichoke carpaccio with fresh truffles, parmesan, lettuce and tomatoes for us, as we prefer to forgo the meat. Of course, a glass of wine is practically mandatory in France. The main dish of the day is a codfish steak, served with potato and celery salad. Yet another revelation, so good. And while sailing students are busy out on the sea, we're enjoying the view and indulging in the sweet sin of a cheesecake for dessert. Another, even more spectacular option for a great meal would have been the Plongeoir, right next to our restaurant. You see this terrace? Yeah, you want to go there and eat and have lunch or dinner. This is a brilliant idea, but you have really to book up front, please. And when I say book up front, I mean months before. For a coffee and a snack in the afternoon, or even just a break from exploring the neighborhood, how about the pâtisserie Mela? This charming cafe was opened by, well, Mela, three years ago, and it's just really sweet. The cakes are homemade by the owner, using organic ingredients. We'll be ready for the next adventure once we've finished our little break. So we've had a great breakfast this morning. We've seen beautiful terraces with uh, tourists lined up who were eating. We had a wonderful lunch on this terrace. There are bars all over the place. So I think food is a check. Now, what's there to do at night at and around the harbor? So we've been walking around all day. We've seen all of the port neighborhood. The sun is starting to set. So it's about time we had a little drink, a little aperitif. That's what the French do at this time of the day. And we're gonna start our nightlife part with this. What better way to start your night out than with another nice meal? Head to Rue Bonaparte and you'll find one nice restaurant after another. Again, offering local Mediterranean, but also international dishes. 
Place Garibaldi is lined with various eateries too. You could have stayed at the port. Bars like Marnolens serve food as well. But it's also fun to stroll along Rue Cassini, Guisol, Lascaris and get inspired by the different small contemporary restaurants there. Of course, there are just as many bars in this neighborhood. Young, creative, stylish, cozy, anything you could wish for. A cool bar with live music several nights a week is Ketch, a few minutes further north but easily accessible on foot from the port. Check out our video about Nice's nightlife if you want to find out more about it. And if you're into salsa, here's another cool tip for you, literally next to the port. This unconventionally decorated club called Cuba Libre. I think we saw a lot of things, tons of bars, restaurants here in this quartier. And I think we are good to tick off nightlife. All right, wrapping up our list, where do you retreat to at night? There aren't actually that many hotels in this area, but here are three we can suggest. Firstly, there's the Saint Paul, where we had lunch earlier, offering great value for money. Then there's this stylish apartment hotel called L'Abeille, the Bee, located right on Rue Bonaparte with its many bars and restaurants. Or if you prefer a chain hotel, there's an Ibis style conveniently situated in the heart of it all. And don't forget to check out Airbnb options as well. Accommodation? Check! By the way, if you want to see more trendy neighborhoods in Nice, have a look over there.